Hi, and welcome to another segment of Service Talk. My name is Denny. And I'm Lori. And to get things started, Denny, I want you to take a look at this. This is one of those little cars that you rev up backwards and you let it go and... Call your insurance agent. The point is, this little toy helps to demonstrate one of the very important but often overlooked components of a vehicle called the driveline. Or you may also know it as the drivetrain. It's that part of the vehicle that converts the energy generated by the engine into the mechanical movement that turns the wheels and makes the vehicle go. In this service facility, we are always concerned about the condition of the fluid in every automotive system. The drive line is no exception. To find out why, let's put drivetrains on the rack. <laughs> When a lot of people think about what makes a vehicle go, they think engine. But the engine is just the first part of that process. The other key parts of the drivetrain include the transmission and the differential. Now vehicles can come with the differential in the front or the rear, or in the case of four-wheel drive, in both the front and the rear. What the differential has in common with the engine is a need for lubrication. After your engine does its work creating the combustion that drives the pistons up and down inside your engine, that up and down motion is transferred to your transmission, which in turn sets in motion the gears and the differential. And the differential then turns the axle, which turns the wheels, which makes the world go around your vehicle. To do that though, there's a lot of metal engaging a lot of other metal inside your drivetrain, and that's where lubricants come in. They're lubricants that flow through your drivetrain for the same reason they flow through your engine, to prevent the friction that wears down the metal components of both. The good news is there are fewer deposits that form on these parts as compared to the crankcase, but the lubricants still are exposed to heat and friction and therefore have a limited life to them. They only last so long, and the drivetrain, just like a real train, has to be in sync or you're not going very far. Thanks, John. Which is why we need to change the lubricants in the drivetrain every so often. Now, the owner's manual recommends we change the fluid in the rear differential and both the front and rear differential on four-wheel drives, as well as the fluid in a manual transmission, generally at the same mileage intervals. And that mileage interval depends on the type of vehicle you have, where you drive, and how you drive. For example, do you use your vehicle for towing, or do you have a lot of stop-and-go city traffic? That sounds like a good thing to discuss with the service rep. And one thing the service rep will tell you is that it's not necessary to change the lubricant as often as the oil in the engine. But if you just ignore it, what you're going to eventually notice is some noise coming from the drivetrain, a howling or whining kind of sound typically. But that's kind of like waiting for the oil light to come on before you add engine oil. That is really pushing it. It's not only important how often this service is performed, but how it is performed. The problem is that it's difficult to get all the old fluid drained from the differential before you try to put in the new. We use a method of extracting virtually all the old fluid before the new goes in. This new method means we really know what kind of protection we've got between those moving parts. And speaking of protection, we use the highest quality lubricant available. Which means your drivetrain is going to perform better and last longer. So the bottom line on the drive line is to watch your odometer and get it serviced at the right intervals for your driving conditions. If you have any questions about our drive line service, ask our service representative here in the service center.